Salutations. Welcome to Spiritual Blitherings, Philosophical Ponderings, and Everything Ramblings at the Hopeful Humanist Cafe. I'm your host, Steve, the Hopeful Humanist, and this is a Just Some Guy production. Today we're going to talk about a decent flow of the good life and a resource for our spiritual toolbox. Actually, two resources for our spiritual toolboxes. One is a TED Talk called uh, Draw Your Life, and the other one's this really incredible app that you can access on your phone or you can use it on desktops called Duolingo. But I'm going to get to them. I, I like to put that out there right away. So if there's some people that just want to figure out what is the resource and then get to the resource and experiment and explore them on their own, that they can avoid all the other kind of stuff that might hinder them in terms of that process. So today is December 28th. It is the one year anniversary of the Hopeful Humans Cafe. I'm pretty excited about that. The Hopeful Humanist Cafe is one year old. And as a very modest, just some guy production, it's gone from a more or less a non-existent audience to a, a very small audience that can access the shows on Google Play, iTunes, Podbean, and Stitcher. So that's pretty exciting. This episode, we're going to be doing, we're going to be starting off with a year-end review. The quote for today is a Hopeful Humanist Cafe proverb, and it says, remember, don't forget what you know. Don't forget what you know. I think that we know a lot of stuff, and life is busy, and sometimes we get so caught up in what we're doing that we don't get a chance to kind of think every now and then when we're in something, and we don't draw upon the internal resources that we have. So I like to think of this moment as a kind of moment to pause and reflect about what we've talked about so far this year and get ready to orient ourselves for the new year. So season's greetings as this is that time of year in terms of transition points and soon enough we'll be stepping over the threshold into a new chapter, a new annual chapter. So I think it makes sense to do a year-end curriculum review. If we go back and think about our very first discussion at the Hopeful Humans Cafe, I introduced this thing called the Happier Quest. And the idea was I was going to invite people to explore resources and then to build for themselves their own self-directed curriculums for wellness. So over the year, this will be ending with episode 15, there are 15 episodes that we've had a meeting of the minds. And each episode, while it does, each one stands on its own, it also simultaneously, it, all of them are intimately interconnected and build a foundation for the Happier Quest. This moment of reflection kind of reveals the dynamic nature of what we can call this moment, the now. It uh, is connected in a thread-like fashion uh, to the past. It's informed and it's influenced by the past and it stretches and projects into the future. And so the things that we're doing now in terms of the reflection pieces are really important for us to orient ourselves and to create a vision and then hopefully over time act in ways to manifest that vision. Everything that's been shared with you in the context of the Hopeful Humus Cafe, there, there's a couple little disclaimers and I mentioned them a number of times at the very beginning in the first couple of podcasts, but I just want to say it again if there's any new listeners out there. Uh, number one, you know, I, I'm just some guy and I'm encouraging people to explore a couple of resources and inviting them to think about whether or not these resources could be a benefit to put in one's spiritual toolbox. So I don't have a monopoly on the truth. And my strong encouragement for all listeners is to be critically reflective. So you want to know your bias. You want to try to suspend judgment. Open up to the space that's created in these discussions, ask some questions, and then make an informed decision about what you might choose to integrate into your self-directed curriculum, and then the other stuff that you're going to discard. So over the course of the year, we've explored a whole bunch of really important core resources that could help someone in terms of the happier quest or the wellness quest, however you've defined it for yourself. We talked about Action for Happiness. We've talked about the Greater Good magazine with Berkeley. We've talked about Cam H that has information about mental health and addiction, talking about anxiety BC in ways of standing up to anxiety and authentic happiness. And in terms of those different resource explorations, there's been a couple foundational thoughts that I've kind of presented as food for thought, something to think about. 
And as I talk about these foundational thoughts, I just like to introduce the thought, the possibility that they kind of parallel some of the ideas that are presented in Buddhist philosophy in terms of the Four Noble Truths. The first foundational thought that I've offered is that life is absurd and that even though it's absurd, even though we're in a world where we want things at times from the world that the world can't give us, you know, in terms of meaning, purpose, what to value, how to live one's life, that even though that the world can't give that to us, we can act in ways in which we can create meaning, create purpose, and give ourselves some direction. In terms of the absurd, I've suggested that because of the contradictions, the ironies, and the paradoxes that we're caught up and tangled in, that's, it's hard to be healthy in this world. I'm not just talking for young people. I'm saying like across the board, it's hard to be healthy in this world. I introduced this idea of commonplace insanity, just saying just by virtue of being in this world and just by virtue of having to deal with the complexity and the paradoxes and ironies, that at times we find ourselves in that difficult place of metaphorically keeping our head above the water. And sometimes we feel like we're drowning. In addition to commonplace and sanity, I've also talked about greedy institutions, right? So the greedy institutions are all these different aspects of our lives that demand all of our attention and pull us in different directions. So we're talking about the institution of work or academia, school, higher learning. We're talking about parenthood. We're even talking about home ownership. Our homes demand our attention in terms of maintenance. Otherwise, things start falling apart and breaking down. And, and then there's the whole marketplace and consumerism where we're always being fed these ideas about we are in and of ourselves a form of lack. We're incomplete and we need these other things and products and experiences in our lives to be complete. And that is all a part of the whole miswanting. So it's hard to be healthy in this world. Many of us are struggling with a lack of time affluence. We, we don't have enough time to do all the things that we want to do. And because we're being pulled, we, we don't have enough energy. We're exhausted. So we find that either we ourselves or other people are struggling with depression, anxiety, loneliness, chronic pain. And while we've recognize that and would seem like we've arrived at a very dark place in terms of those realizations. We've also explored that it, even though it's hard to be healthy in this world, we can do hard things and there are resources out there for us to tap into that can make a difference in terms of giving us the lives that we want for ourselves. In terms of this reality, this kind of dark reality that I've kind of painted for the moment, it allows us to realize when we take those moments sit, you know, the unexamined life is not a life worth living, that idea of just deep examination. It allows us to realize that the real business in life is the spiritual journey. And that in terms of that, the keys to standing up to the absurd are to live consciously, to be aware of the opportunities that exist for us in the here and the now, to tap into those windows of opportunity, fenetra de opportunite, to invest in relationships, Relationship is paramount, and I said that in the first episode, and I've said it time and time again, it's paramount for the happier quest. And then I think we also need to be aware of our strengths, leverage them, become aware of our needs, beliefs, values, intentions, interests, and then live in a way where we can tap into and exploit our creative potential, where we can be the authors of our own lives and that this will allow us to orient ourselves to follow a path that will allow us to achieve higher levels of happiness. So the above, what I just shared with you, kind of parallels the Four Noble Truths and that, you know, life is full of suffering. That's the first Noble Truth, and I've identified that uh, it's hard to be healthy. They suggest, uh, in terms of Buddhist philosophy, that uh, the reason why we suffer is because we crave. I'm suggesting that the reason why we suffer is because the world is absurd and we want from it things that it can't give us. The third noble truth is that there could be a cessation to this suffering. And, and I'm identifying that, you know, 
if we sit and think and we get beyond the confusion of miswanting and commonplace insanity and being pulled in different directions by the greedy institutions, we realize that the real business of life is the spiritual journey where we're living in communion with ourselves and others and that we, by investing in relationships and creativity, have a great power in terms of being the authors of our lives. Right? So that's exciting stuff. That quick review about everything that's kind of been explored this year sets the scene for the two resources I'd like to talk to you about. So usually when we get to the end of a year, and as the new year approaches, we sometimes talk about these things called New Year's resolutions. And I'm not opposed to a New Year's resolution. I myself, I'm not kind of oriented in that kind of direction. I am really big on vision boards. Now, some people call them dream boards. And what they'll do is you can go on you, uh, YouTube and search for different videos on how to make a vision board or a dream board. But for me, the, the dream board, while it's full of these really important, colorful, concrete images about the life that you want, I kind of operate a little bit differently. For me, a vision board is an opportunity to kind of create a list in a kind of a check mark format that spans over a three year period. And I've been doing this since 2007 and 2008. And that I, I'm creating these achievable, smart goals, I guess you could say, over a three year period with the hope of getting a variety of check marks. I put it on a, a great big whiteboard that uh, it's got to be big enough to see at a distance. You want to be able to step back from it about five or six feet and then you can just kind of take it in and absorb it. And you can, for me, as I said, um, it's most of my, uh, the stuff I'm putting on mine are words with check boxes. Other people would draw pictures and you need to do what works for you. I like to put it someplace that's safe, you know, in terms of people coming in and out of your home. If you're having guests, this is kind of personal sacred stuff. So I put it in my downstairs laundry room and it's up there and I usually give it a, a title and I'll say a three year vision board plan. And my next one, I'm actually just coming up to the point of having to start and construct another vision board from 2019 to 2022. And it, it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff that's going to address the different domains in my life. But I want to emphasize that, you know, for me, because I'm a part of a family, I have my beautiful wife and my two boys, um, it has to be inclusive. They, they have to be able to have a part in the share of creating the vision board that's going to guide us over the next three years. And you also have to be flexible because some things could change. You might redefine things. You might reconceptualize things. And well, for instance, um, I've always wanted to write a book in one of my past vision boards. I, I had that as a goal to write a book, but I, I was finding that I was really struggling with language because I was struggling to, you know, writer's block, sit down and to discipline myself, to get my ideas out in a coherent fashion. I really struggled with that. And that's when I, I got the idea of, well, you know, I like to talk. I, I feel comfortable in the medium of dialogue. So perhaps maybe I should be thinking in a different direction. That's when I had the vision for the Hopeful Humanist Cafe. And I nurtured that thought. And uh, I'm at a point right now where the Hopeful Humanist Cafe is, you know, December 28th. It's, it's one year anniversary and it's one year old. So you, you need to be flexible because things can morph. And at, as things unfold over the years, uh, you'll, you'll get a whole bunch of accomplished, a bunch of the uh, check marks accomplished, but some things you won't, and there's always an opportunity for carryovers. And sometimes I discovered that there's some things that definitely need to carry over to the next vision board, but other things kind of drop off by the wayside, and that's okay too. So, in terms of the vision board for me, there there is a bunch of things I can always I can already imagine that I'm going to want to have on my vision board. I'm going to want to continue to build the Hopeful Humanist Cafe. At some point, I'm going to need a new computer, a new mixer board, and another mic so I can do interviews. I'm going to always focus on relationships, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, my relationship uh, in terms of my role at work, what that looks like uh, with, with my mom and my family and friends. These are things that uh, sustain me and they're important to me. And 
I want to be able to say that they're up on the board and that I haven't overlooked that. I'll have something that relates to uh, engaging in leisure. And, and leisure is not just recreation where you're distracted, but it, you know, once again, the Hopeful Humans Cafe for me is an experience of engagement with leisure. And of course, recreation, I'm playing ping pong or pickleball, those kind of things. There will be something about uh, self-care. Uh, another big thing is uh, this idea of getting out of debt and creating a budget to live by. The, the other thing that I want to mention, that kind of is the segue into the final um, resource. But uh, before I do the segue, I'd like to say I, I'm, I'm inviting you to go to YouTube and to access this link that I'm providing called Draw Your Future by Patty Dibrowalski. And she identifies that one way that you can really push yourself to create real and substantial change in your life is to kind of draw a picture. So she's going in a different direction than I would, but it, I, it was powerful. I've watched it a number of times and it's really inspired me in terms of constructing my vision board the way that I've fashioned it for myself. Take it and make it your own. She identifies that drawing a picture, having this, this image of current reality and then really fleshing out in details the desired future reality and figuring out the bridge between the two could be a real powerful way of not only initiating the initial imaginative seed, but that because of that, you can see it and that allow you to start to believe it. And then, then you can start to act on it. She identifies that the odds are against us in terms of making change, but definitely check out her TED Talk on uh, YouTube. The last thing that I would want to have on my vision board would be about my dream to go on a family sabbatical. Now, this is a dream that I've had for about five years now and hasn't actualized itself. I mean, I, I can say I'm, I am fortunate enough that I've gone on a couple of parental leaves. I went on, with, with the birth of my first son, I went on a parental leave for three months to France. And the birth of my second son, we went on a leave uh, to France for another uh, four weeks. And uh, I'm fortunate that in August of 2019, coming up, and this would be on my vision board. Well, once again, we're going to France for four weeks, and that's that, that's pretty significant. That counts for something. But I have this dream of a family sabbatical, and that uh, a large part of it would be centered in uh, Europe and, and France and around Spain and also Southeast Asia. But in terms of preparing for the possibility of the manifestation of that family sabbatical, there's something that I need to do. And I also need to do it for me to be prepared to go to France in August of 2019, and that is to learn French. So that's something I want to put on my vision board, learn French, and it, it spills over into that larger vision that I have, that larger dream of going on a family sabbatical. So that link I'm going to provide for you will take you to a resource called Duolingo. Now, there's a part of me that thinks a lot of people are already aware of Duolingo. And so it's kind of, I'm not really giving, uh, for some people, I might not really be providing you with information about a new resource. It's something that you're already aware of and something you're already exploring and, and having some fun with. But I, as I talk about this with other people, there are a number of people that are actually quite surprised. Uh, some people talk about other kind of programs that are available that cost money to uh, explore in terms of learning a, a second language. But once again, as the Hopeful Humanist Cafe is dedicated to exploring quality resources that are free, well, this hits the mark, right? Duolingo requires no money. It's a, a free application that you can use on your phone or you can access through a desktop. It uh, has a home page where there are a number of different lessons that are set up and you can set a goal for yourself that works for you. It's mine is to do about a five to 10 minute lesson, lesson per day. And at this point, I have a streak of 40 days. And so, you know, I'm quite pleased with myself. I'm, I'm making great strides compared to past efforts. And I think this application, this program has really been a part of uh, my success in terms of these steps forward. Uh, just be getting reminders about 
that uh, I have been successfully logging in every day and uh, seeing you know what the streak currently is at is motivating. Uh, the lessons are at a, a at a level that meet my lack of ability at this point and you know it's it's a good fit there's dis- discussion opportunities and there's also some stories that you can start to read in this to answer some questions right initially when i thought about learning french you know there there's this uh, person named gardner and he has this theory of multiple intelligences and i uh, I, I kind of gave myself an out in terms of being open to learning French. Uh, my thinking was, you know, I have certain intelligences, interpersonal, intrapersonal intelligence, but in terms of languages, that's that's a, a weakness. You know, I had some automatic negative thoughts, you know, like I can't learn. But when I kind of stood up to those ants and, and to the, the out thinking that I provided myself with, I started to make um, some great advances forward in terms of deepening my understanding of French. So, you know, this is something that's going to allow me to go to France and connect with family. My wife is from France. And, you know, the other thing is just learning another language is also giving me an opportunity to understand that you can conceptualize the world in different ways. Just as a a quick example, uh, in, in English, you would say, I am hungry. I am you know, as if the, the totality of what I am is hunger. But in French, it's, it's different. It's like you have hunger or you have thirst. These are just some nuances that kind of change the way that I'm looking at things that I've taken for granted, right? So I'm really enjoying this experience. And this resource for anyone who wants to learn another language, whether or not you're anticipating some upcoming travel or you just want to learn because there's a joy in learning and and language is something that interests you, I think that people will be pleasantly pleased with Duolingo. So check out those two resources. Draw your your future with uh, Patty Dabrowski. Check out Duolingo and see if these are some resources that you'd like to put in your spiritual toolbox. The last thought I want to end with is perhaps as we think about 2019 and what that self-directed curriculum might look like, I'd like to invite people to uh, consider one of these uh, three reading opportunities. I think reading is a wonderful way to expand oneself and to learn about different ways of seeing the world, experiencing the world. And these three in particular also provide an opportunity to learn more about the absurd, as Camus has talked about. So there's three right here that I'd like to share. I'll provide the links. So the first one is called 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. The second one is The Shoe on the Roof by Will Ferguson. And the last one is called The Road Warriors, A Journey Back in Time by Sean Toland. And that's a short story that's really interesting. It's a good friend of mine who is a teacher at a university in Japan and interested in strategies to facilitate the learning process in terms uh, of uh, language acquisition. And as, uh, as a hobby, he is a, a writer. And this Road Warriors, A Journey Back in Time, when I read it, uh, it had some kind of nostalgic appeal. But additionally, I, I was just really impressed about how it really did capture what the absurd is and uh, what it's all about. So there's three possible stories, novels, uh, short stories that you might want to, a short story that you might want to check out. So thank you for supporting me over the last year. I feel blessed to be able to continue and uh, move forward with the Hopeful Humanist Cafe. I want to thank you for tuning in for uh, this particular episode and joining me for this, yet again, another tip of the iceberg conversation about vision boards and dreams in terms of my dream, the family sabbatical and the happier quest. I look forward to our uh, next meeting of the minds in 2019. And as always, the conversation is ongoing and continuous. So peace for now. And, you know, uh, for one last time to kind of capture a theme that resonated in uh, the earlier part of the year. Peace out, Panda.